Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're going to have a great guest, Dr. Galen Erickson, University of Nebraska Animal Science. He is the Nebraska Cattle Industry Professor of Ruminant Nutrition. We're going to have a great show talking about byproduct feeds. Stay tuned. When you spot BRD in your cattle, that's your golden opportunity to target infection and its associated fever with a single dose of Resflor Gold, the industry standard dual therapy. To learn more, talk to your Merck Animal Health rep or your vet and see label at resflorgold.com. Animals intended for human consumption must not be slaughtered within 38 days of treatment. This product is not approved for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk, and we're in Lincoln, Nebraska, where I'm with Dr. Galen Erickson. If you don't know who Dr. Erickson is and you're in the feedlot industry, uh, you've been living underneath a rock. Uh, Dr. Erickson is one of the most accomplished ruminant nutritionists uh, probably ever. And uh, I'm not saying that uh, because he's sitting next to me. I'm saying it because he's just done the work and, and so much. Uh, and we're so thankful for the work that you continue to do that is so applied that we can use every day. It's just amazing. Yeah, we've been blessed with lots of good students over the years and uh, a lot of industry support. So that's the key. Yeah, well, and you got to have someone that is the nidus that attracts that and and uh, puts the producers and the students first. And, and you've always done that. And when we're talking Nebraska and we're talking cattle feeding, we're going to talk byproducts. Mm -hmm. But but it's, it's larger in scope than that, right? Yeah, a lot of people... Uh, think that byproducts is all we do at Nebraska, which is we do do a lot of work on byproducts. But I think to start with, you know, we've been feeding byproducts to cattle forever. And there's a lot of different feeds that actually today we just think are common that are actually byproducts. I mean, soybean meal technically is a byproduct right. of soy crushing. Uh, but if you're in areas of the country with, with beet processing, you know, beet pulps, common byproduct, sugarcane byproducts if you were in another country. So just don't want to forget, there's a whole host of different kinds of byproducts. The key characteristic in most cases like citrus pulp and, and others is that they're, they're fibrous in nature, but they're quite digestible and excellent feeds for cattle. And so cattle and byproducts fit together because they're still composed of fiber, but it's a really good fiber. It's not right. like grass and hay that you think of. In this part of the world, when people talk byproducts, we're normally talking about distillers grains or corn gluten feeds and so on. So done a lot of work on those over the years, yeah. Yeah, I can still remember back when I was an undergrad, Dr. Trankel feeding mm -hmm. citrus pulp and some of the first stuff that was coming out of Blair, some of the gluten. Yeah. And he'd give me a rake to go around and rake the citrus pulp because the cattle would start sorting yeah. <laughs> around some of it. Probably get the oranges first or something, yeah. <laughs> But uh, so talk to me a little bit about the history of, of the distillers and, and gluten. Yeah, a lot of people think, you know, that, that this is new and, and, and brand new and exciting. We've been feeding distillers grains to cattle for hundreds of years and, and really the origins making whiskey. Yep. And so, you know, when you make whiskey, you make distillers. In fact, there's uh, literature and evidence that there was a cattle boom in Kentucky back in the you know turn of the 1900 or the turn of the last century. And that's because they were feeding distillers grains and in wet form, which is kind of exciting to me, uh, to a lot of cattle locally. So it's it's not a new concept to feed distillers grains. What is new is with, of course, the major expansion of fuel ethanol here in the Midwest and in states like Iowa and Nebraska and Illinois and Minnesota is we started to produce so much more right. that I remember going to meetings back in the in early 2000s and we were eating cookies made out of distiller's grains because they thought we're gonna have so much people are gonna have to eat it. Well, we produce more now than we ever really have and yet we still don't have enough for the cattle we have. So we're not long on distillers, but uh, there was a lot of expansion and, and everybody thought we we're gonna be swimming in it. And to be frank, there was some really good opportunities for the cattle feeding sector uh, back there, back in the early 2000s. 
We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about how distillers are being used in the beef industry and a whole lot more with Dr. Galen Erickson. DNA Dialogue is brought to you by Igenity Feeder, powered by Neogen. Well, when most people purchase calves, they have a target number of days in mind, and it's usually based on incoming weight and the type of class of cattle they purchase. But there are other ways to actually try and estimate uh, optimum days on feed. And of course, our trend is to make cattle bigger and bigger. And really that's because cost of gain in general, in other words, the cost that you're putting into that animal per day is generally less than the cost or price you're receiving on them cattle per pound. So really, technically speaking from an economic term, we should feed until our marginal cost, the cost for that day equals our marginal revenue, which is obviously the price per pound. The hard part in that is knowing cost of gain on a daily basis. And there's a lot of debate about that in the industry. Many industry experts feel like the cost of gain is going up pretty dramatically at the end of the feeding period. Whereas I think the data today show that actually cost of gain is fairly level and if anything suggests we should be making cattle bigger and bigger, which is why the trend has been to make cattle bigger. The only other thing I'd mention that's really important if you're a feedlot operator is uh, how are you marketing the cattle. So really there's three general methods, live, so on a live weight basis, one price for all the cattle based on live weight. Uh, carcass weight basis, sometimes called dress basis or in the beef. That's again, one price on a carcass weight or a grid, which is obviously carcass weight, but also premium and discount for yield and quality grade. I bring that up because if you're a live cattle marketer, and selling cattle on a live basis, cost of gains are probably going up more dramatically at the end than if you're a dressed basis or grid-based uh, marketing program. So how you market cattle influences optimum days on feed, but really it's about knowing your cost of gain on a daily basis. Are you a cattle feeder looking to manage for a stronger and more profitable set of cattle? Look no further than Igenity Feeder. Igenity Feeder utilizes DNA to gain insight into your cattle's genomic potential. With the information to predict performance, quality, and economic endpoints for cattle feeders. Animals are scored and ranked in a simple format, driving more precise and accurate management decisions. Igenity Feeder gives you the power to predict days on feed, manage variability within lots, characterize carcass performance, and focus on metrics important to you and your operation. With the data provided, you will identify superior animals earlier and maintain high operational efficiency. Maximize your profit and optimize performance with Igenity Feeder. They're here, they're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin. Choose Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With Safeguard's efficacy, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Galen Erickson, and we're at the University of Nebraska at the Animal Science Complex, where Dr. Erickson is a professor. Matter of fact, he's the Nebraska Cattle Industry Professor, which is an endowed professorship from the cattlemen, which, you know, next to students, uh, that's that's about as good as it gets, right? Yeah, you know, it's uh, beef industry is really important to our state. So years and years ago, the, the producers in the state uh, funded a professorship for for some of us here in the animal science department that do hopefully good things for them. You do. And we're talking byproduct feed distillers. Let's talk about how it's utilized because we have we have people in different regions of the country that that get a pellet that don't get to use the the stuff straight out of the plants and, right. and so there's different ways that we use this, right? Yeah, you know, really conventional distillers grains and the way it was made for forever from fuel plants was the corn went in, they took the starch out of the corn and converted that to sugar and then to ethanol. So all the stuff in corn grain that's not starch is what comes out. So it's about 30 to 35% fiber 
but it's the most digestible fiber really we've ever seen because it doesn't have any lignin like right. grasses and hay for structure and it's high in protein so it's an excellent protein source in fact that's how we used it for in the old old days as just a protein supplement so it's around 30 percent uh protein and um and then it's got the fat and the corn oil in it which has decreased some in recent times because they've found other ways to remove part of that but uh pretty good source of energy because of the fat the digestible fiber but people often miss that the protein actually obviously meets the protein needs of the cattle but uh, in this case also provides a fair amount of energy right. because you start talking about cattle and protein we start getting into things like rdp and rup and people probably heard of those and may not know exactly what that means but uh, you know that protein nutrition to cattle is really important and distillers is an excellent source yeah it kind of took a lot of the uh, fun out of all the debates we used to have on starter rations and you know level and and source because Boom, there's, there it is. Yeah, yeah, and it's, you know, excellent because of the protein as a, in growing cattle diets, yeah. receiving diets. It's probably one of the most palatable feeds we've, we've come across. And the joke is if you're gonna supplement some calves out on pasture or range, uh, it's a good way to get them checked every day. The thing is you gotta be watch, watch out not to run them over because they'll be there <laughs> when you're delivering the feed. So it, it's, uh, it's really palatable, good feed. Obviously, it's got to be at the right price, but but in most cases, it's it's an excellent feed to consider and at least put a pencil to. So, kind of how is it used? Like, I mean, from starter to finishers, we got about a minute until we wrap up this segment. But how do, how are we using that? Yeah, it's used as a as an energy source today in many feed yards, but it also provides the protein. Yep. So, if they can get a good buy, we'll include it in finishing diets, and it's pretty much a staple across most of the cattle feeding regions, where we'll feed ten percent as a protein source in the diet, to maybe as high as thirty or forty percent of the diet on a dry basis if it's a good buy. Works well in receiving diets works well in uh, backgrounding diets because it's got the right kind of protein so if you've got a high forage and you want to background heifers develop bulls develop heifers uh, grow cattle excellent source and then of course can always be used as a as a good protein source for cows um, certainly depends on the time of year and your production system but many times supplementation of cows in those situations is a good idea it's perfect folks wealth of knowledge right here at the university of nebraska dr galen erickson We'll be right back after these messages. When it comes to treating BRD, you want a product that you can count on to get the job done at an affordable price. Macrosyn by Bimeda delivers on both. A straight shooting, no BS to lathromycin that does what it's supposed to do. End of story. You don't need to take our word for it, though. Go to macrosyn.com for customer testimonials and head-to-head -head trial results. For your cattle and your bottom line, choose Macrosyn. It's the drive, the passion, the unbridled desire to be the world's greatest. It's the early mornings, late nights, and every hour in between spent grooming the next generation of champions. We're with you through the best times and the tough times. Seeing your horses through inevitable health scares and setbacks you never saw coming. Everything they deserve is here, delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. In the livestock industry, castration is a common practice to ensure proper herd management. All methods are painful, regardless of the age of the animal. At Solve It, we could not ignore the clear industry need for better castration solutions. So we developed Lidoband, a novel lidocaine impregnated elastrator, addressing the pain associated with band castration. It provides local anesthesia throughout the castration process. Lidoband, a small device that can make a big difference. When the ones who have your heart need your help, Count on us for everything they deserve, delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Galen Erickson. Dr. Erickson is a professor here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. 
He is the Nebraska cattle industry professor, and he is one of the most outstanding feedlot nutritionists uh, of our time. And so uh, we're talking byproduct feeds. And uh, so what are, what are some of the things that we got to look out for? Yeah, you know, I think first and foremost, uh, done a lot of work, shown a lot of positive benefits, helps performance in many cases, um, but you always need to price it. And, and so I think one thing to be careful on is don't buy distillers at any cost. Make sure you look at what's the nutrients you need. Do you need protein in that situation? Do you need an energy source in that situation? Maybe you need some of the minerals. I just point out for any cow operations, you know, excellent source of phosphorus, help yeah. offset some of your supplemental, supplemental phosphorus needs, but still put a price to it. So it's not, it's not the perfect thing at all costs. And that gets a little complicated because plants, and especially if you're a feed yard or background in cattle and getting a large supply, you can have wet distillers, what they call modified distillers, or you can have dry distillers. And so there's different moistures, of mm. course, in those three different types of distillers. For finishing cattle, uh, you know, the wetter the product, the better the performance, generally speaking. But you got to price it correctly, and so make sure you're accounting for that extra water when you're pricing. So wet distillers, you don't want to don't be purchasing a lot of water. <laughs> Second thing, which is a big issue, especially for finishing cattle, is managing supply. And of course, that involves a host of things like plant operations that you're getting it from, um, trucking and, and weather and all of the things that you have to account for when you're purchasing perishable product like a wet or modified distiller. So um, probably price and supply management are two biggest things to consider. Yeah, and, and you know, we see it too in, in you know, yards, small yards that can't feed it all the way through in the summertime and it gets hot and yep. we get some issues with having too much supply and then and then we have the other one where we don't have enough with right. the bigger yards and so yeah it's 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 pretty common so people can adjust inclusion because you know it's hard to manage your cattle inventory and you're not going to do rapid increases or decreases hopefully in those but you can adjust inclusion in the diet to account for your inventory and and we've looked at some of those mold and things and yeah it's a perishable product you want to use it up as you as you get it good well, and then the other two things that, you know, kind of come along with this is as we increase the concentration of protein and we increase the concentration of, of the fiber, we, we can increase the concentration of things we didn't want to. Right. As I mentioned, you know, there's uh, distillers historically had around 12 percent fat as, as on a dry matter basis. Today, it's running most products are running seven to eight percent. But you. Uh, you can overfeed fat to cattle. Fat's great, and, yeah. and, but a little's good and a lot can be not so good. So and especially in cow situations and background in cattle, there's a limitation on how much fat you wanna be supplementing. And, and uh, now in most cases, you're not gonna hit those levels, but uh, you can't just feed straight distillers to cattle because of the fat content. Yep. The other major concern with distillers that you wanna be careful of or conscientious of is sulfur. So if you're in an area of the country with high sulfates in the water, uh, your inclusions will be different or have to be managed more closely than areas with clean water. Um, but again, in the old days when our focus was, what's the maximum we can feed? Because you were just foolish not to be feeding it and the price was right and so on, really competitive. We worried a lot more about sulfur than we do probably today because in most cases, price will limit your inclusion to where that shouldn't be a problem. But there's numerous animal health concerns with high sulfates in the diet. We definitely saw some, but, uh, you know, they've really decreased, like, like you said. Right. Thanks a bunch. Um, this is perfect time for a break. When we come back, we'll talk about some of the future byproduct feeds with Dr. Galen Erickson here at the University of Nebraska. The cost of an open cow these days is very expensive. It's hard at times to dedicate a half a day or a whole day to leave your practice to go palpate cows. And so Alertus Test has helped speed the process up of getting preg rates back to the owners. And so free up time for diagnostics or working in your clinic, it also will help generate revenue not being on site to do the testing. Success in the cattle business hinges on a lot of different people playing their part. 
From the vet to the cowboy and the nutritionist to the feed truck driver, you rely on them to get their job done right, and so do your cattle. Your expectations for the vaccines you use should be no different. By Meet is cattle vaccines were developed and are made and sold by men and women in the cattle business. No smoke and mirrors, just real world protection that you can rely on. Go to buymeatabiologicals.com to learn more. When a new calf hits the ground, the clock starts ticking. A belly full of colostrum gives them their best chance, but if they don't get any, time starts running out. That's when you grab a bag of Oxford Ag Colostrum in their patented feeding system. It's simple, you fill it with warm water, shake it to mix, feed it with a tube or a nipple, and you are done. No bucket, no bottle, no mess, and right on time. Ask for by name wherever animal health supplies are sold. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve, delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Galen Erickson. We're here at the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, uh, where Dr. Erickson is the Nebraska cattle industry professor. He is a remnant nutrition and professor here in animal science. If you want to see some of the best work, go look at the publications he has uh, in referee journal articles, his Nebraska, the NEB guides, that you got, beef report, I mean, yeah. my gosh, it's just a wealth of information. I use them all the time in feed yards and in practice, and i um, very thankful for the, the work that you guys have done. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Now, we're talking byproducts. Everything's got a future, doesn't it? And, uh, and it might be I a hope, good I hope one. we all do, yeah. one. <laughs> But what do you think are some of the futures of byproducts? Well, you know, I think to start with, the Nebraska Corn Board's been really supportive and other industry organizations at really helping fund things. And what I've really appreciated about the Nebraska Corn Board is we've spent time talking about what's the future look like and let's get some work done now that helps set us up for the future. So as an example, um, I mentioned that the process used to be pretty straightforward, but now there's things like fractionation that's being discussed. And really what that means is so really for the last decade, they've started to spin off some of the oil. And, and I think there's a perception in the industry, well, the fat was the only thing that was good about distillers and so now it's not as good. The data don't quite show that, that it's still a good feed. Um, and, and we've done a lot of research showing what's the exact effect of that fat removal. And again, supported by the corn industry here in Nebraska and, and, and elsewhere. So, but that's continuing to change. So there's now some interest in um, taking off some of the protein and having another fractionated product that's a higher protein, maybe more like soybean meal, to go to non-ruminants or to go to aquaculture. And trust me, our cattle industry won't be in the same competition price-wise when, when you start talking about fish food and right. other things. But it's not all gonna go there. And so I still believe that we'll have a, a bright future and opportunities to be feeding distillers grains, but they will change and, and we have to adapt to that change. And our job is to figure out what is that still worth and then what is it priced at? And then you have to make the decision on a, on a year to year basis, am I gonna feed this and is it priced in? And so I think understanding the value, which is really what we're interested in from the research standpoint, and then making sure you price that competitively to your other alternatives. But there'll be a future. We're going to have distiller's grains and we're going to feed it to cattle. And I think it'll be a little higher in fiber. But remember, it's digestible fiber, still be an OK protein source and a little lower in fat. That's what I predict for the future, but still a lot of opportunity. Well, everything gets partitioned as we have new distilling methods and new, you know, ways to partition the products. And there'll probably be things that are more specialized some of those more specialty things might go into a milk replacer that wouldn't go into you know into a pre-ruminant and so we'll right. use them somewhere that's right i'm i'm still optimistic uh, we always got to be conscientious that we need the feed we need the energy we need to harvest sunlight and agriculture and, and produce feeds but uh, we'll have opportunities to do that and uh, as long as it rains and and the sun shines we'll be okay thank you so much for being on the show today you bet. My pleasure. It's great. Folks, thanks for watching today. If you want to know more about what we do at DocTalk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. 
Always work with your local veterinarian and nutritionist. With Dr. Galen Erickson, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the University of Nebraska at Lincoln, and we'll see you down the road. At Merck Animal Health, we're shaping the future of animal health with pioneering science, connected technology, and insights-driven solutions to bring our customers an unparalleled portfolio of choices to improve cattle care and operational efficiency. We support you and your legacy by helping you meet the challenges of today with the innovations of tomorrow. The cost of an open cow these days is very expensive. It's hard at times to dedicate a half a day or a whole day to leave your practice to go palpate cows. And so Alertus Test has helped speed the process up of getting preg rates back to the owners. And so free up time for diagnostics or working in your clinic. It also will help generate revenue, not being on site to do the testing. When the ones who have your heart need your help, count on us for everything they deserve delivered fast. We'll work hard for you so you can work hard for your dreams. <laughs>